To start at a basic overview, SQL Server is a client-server database. Now, this doesn't mean it's an old technology. It means that everyone who is talking to SQL Server is behaving as a client. It's a client process talking to the server process. So what happens is the client process, whether that's a front-end client or Access or .NET or a web service internal to SQL Server, will make a request to the database. The database then processes all of the requests inside of the database engine and returns only the record set. That's what makes SQL Server a client-server database. In contrast, Access would be considered a file-based database and that the file server is only serving up portions of the database file, and all of the work is actually taking place at every client. That presents several problems because the file is then being spread around several machines. There's a lot of network traffic. Because SQL Server is a client-server database, it solves that problem and creates several advantages. For example, reliability is increased because all of the work is happening inside of the engine, and the file is not being spread across the network. The data integrity rules and constraints are all being maintained inside of one server instead of several different front-end applications. All of this improves performance, not only on the network because there is dramatically less network traffic, but because a high-performance server can be dedicated to handling the database requests. And the job is actually split between the client portion of the work and the server portion of the work. So it distributes the workload between the clients and the server. And I can't emphasize enough the network advantage. If it was a file-based database, like Access, you really have problems spreading the file across more than 20 or so clients. But SQL Server can normally handle, and often does, hundreds or thousands of clients. That would be impossible with an Access database. So let's take a closer look inside of SQL Server and become familiar with its different components. This is the server and the different components for the server. This computer represents the client, or really any client process that's communicating. Inside of the server, you'll notice at the bottom of the stack, there's a SQL OS. Now this is new for SQL Server 2005. The Microsoft team found that Windows was not sophisticated enough at handling threads and memory for SQL Server, so they developed an entire SQL Server OS inside of SQL Server 2005 to handle its own threads and memory so it can support its own caches and locks and buffers and have much greater control over this than just allowing Windows to control the threads and the memory. This provides several advantages for SQL because it can control all of its internal resources, this allows it to host .NET, which gives it not only the ability for us to do .NET programming inside of SQL Server, but also all the .NET is available for SQL Server to use right inside of itself. So let's take a look at some of these components. The biggest one by far is the Relational Database Engine. This is the component that receives query requests, parses them, figures out how to optimize them and how to process them, and then does the actual work. Below the Relational Database Engine would be the Storage Engine. Here it's represented by cache, locks, and buffers. The Storage Engine is what handles all of the I.O., handles the memory, takes care of all the data cache, the data buffers, and makes sure that the data is in memory for the Relational Database Engine to work with. SQL Mail is a new component for SQL Server 2005. and actually has the ability to send and receive SMTP mail requests. This replaces the old way in SQL 2000 that we had to load up a copy of Microsoft Outlook actually on the server, which caused a huge problem for security holes, wasn't very reliable. It was a kind of feature that every DBA hated back in SQL 2000. So SQL Mail is a welcome addition. SQL Agent is actually a very powerful scheduler, which is capable of running maintenance jobs, running extract transform load or ETL jobs, Almost anything you want to automate, you can automate with SQL Agent, and SQL Agent is used frequently by DBAs. There are three services all combined together in the package of BI. One of the strengths of SQL Server 2005 is when you buy SQL Server 2005, depending upon your edition, you receive all of these services. You don't have to buy SQL Server and then buy another package for reporting services and another package for analysis services or data warehouse type services. So the three services for BI, or business intelligence, that comes with SQL Server 2005 are reporting services, which gives you the ability to create beautiful-looking reports and distribute them over the net. It's very, very powerful. 
Integration services, which is used to send and receive data into and out of SQL Server, it replaces the old DTS service in SQL Server 2000. Integration services is very powerful, and it is an enterprise-level ETL-type tool or extract, transform, load-type tool. Analysis services has also been greatly beefed up from SQL Server 2000 to 2005. Analysis services is used for data mining, doing three-dimensional cubes for analysis. It is the portion of the data warehouse that allows you to pull data in multiple different ways and try to find patterns inside of the data. A problem with analysis services is it's not a very pretty front end. So typically people will use some other kind of front end or even Excel as a front end for analysis services. Other services that are used to communicate between servers, which is useful because there are often problems that need to be solved with more than one server, include distributed queries, service broker, and replication. Distributed queries are those queries that access data in other servers besides the primary server which is doing the work. And we're going to have a lesson later on on how to build distributed queries, the specific syntax for that. Another component that makes distributed queries easier is the distributed transaction coordinator, which can actually coordinate transactions so that they have beginnings and ends and they are atomic between multiple servers. Service Broker is also new for SQL Server 2005. Service Broker is a high-performance work queue, sort of a table that can keep track of work that needs to be done in an asynchronous manner. Service Broker also has the ability to pass messages from one service broker to another, so it could be configured and could be programmed to communicate between servers. And the common way of communicating between servers is simply replication. There are several types of replication, merge replication, transaction replication, as two examples. The primary thought of replication is that data that gets put on one server is replicated to another server. In addition to replication, SQL Server 2005 includes mirroring, which allows you to have a mirror of a database on another server. Keep in mind that in this training, we're focusing on developing databases. So while we're talking at this point about the different services and the different components of SQL Server, the rest of this training will be focused on how to develop a database. So we're not going to be talking about service broker or replication in great detail. Another key advantage with SQL Server 2005 compared to SQL Server 2000 is that previous versions of SQL Server communicated only through what is referred to as a tabular data stream, meaning that we receive a query, process it, and return back a tabular data stream of the results. SQL Server 2005 includes the ability to build a web service or the ability to receive a request via web services, process it, and then return back a result via the web service. It does not build the web service inside of SQL Server. Instead, it leverages the HTTP.sys component of Windows Server 2003 or Windows XP. Another component which is leveraged by SQL Server is full text search. And there's a lesson on full text search coming up. Basically, this allows it to index every word inside of certain columns so you can do fantastic text searches. As you can imagine, SQL Server has several tools, and it can be confusing to find which tool is best for which purpose. There's a lesson coming up soon on Management Studio, and right now I want to go ahead and show you how to find the Surface Area Configuration, Configuration Manager, Profiler, Books Online, Database Engine Tuning Advisor, and the Sysmon Perfmon tool. We're not going to take the time to explain everything about the tools, but in this overview of SQL Server, I want to show you at least where the tools are, how to find them, and what they're for.